and welcome to another video where today I asked you guys on Instagram if you could send me your favorite Christmas dessert recipes. These are just things that you have in your family, that you have every year. They don't necessarily have to be Christmassy food. I just feel like Christmas desserts are always hit and miss, aren't they? They always, it could be a disaster and it could be the best thing ever. So I feel like I wanna find a really good recipe and I want to find a recipe that you guys can use this year um, so we're gonna try a variety of different things a few different options we're gonna start off with the recipe that I was sent and suggested the most and I have had this before but never in a Christmas setting so I thought okay let's give it a whirl let's see how we find it we're gonna be making the Australian and New Zealand favorite for Christmas from my emails it seems pavlova we're gonna keep kick it off simple and then we're gonna get to some other things now this genuinely was just absolutely bomb like i would say this was 75 percent of the emails apparently lots of people have it for christmas so let's get started um and most of the recipe that i was sent was from delia smith so we're gonna use a delia recipe what we're gonna do with our little bowl we're gonna pop in three egg whites i feel like everyone knows how to make a meringue at this point right um, and then we're just gonna whip that up real nice and good and then add our caster sugar. Right, now our egg whites are basically there. We're gonna add in some sugar a little bit at a time. You don't wanna over whip the egg whites, that's the problem. It's nearly there. I think we're ready to rock and roll. We're gonna do the test. If you can put it over your head, that means it's done. Ready? Yay! Okay, we've got our little Pavlova mixture. I'm trying to work out, I think I might actually make little nests. Obviously you can do a big one, but I feel like if I make little nests and then they last a lot longer. Pavlova, like the meringue lasts for a really long time. So if we don't eat it all, it's not a problem. People can just like decorate as and when. And instead of making a massive one, putting all the cream and fresh fruit on and then it doesn't get eaten. We've made the little nests. It's actually only made two. And then I've got tried to do this rectangle one, but then we ran out because the one I was sent was like this massive rectangle one. Um, so we'll see how they go. But the nests, I feel like these will be good with some cream and all that jazz in there. I weirdly enjoy this little rectangle guy. There's something about him I like. I don't know why this one is cracking me up. It looks like a, I don't know, I love the underdog, but I'm about to decorate my little pavlova ready for some festivities. A new little fact that I learned about pavlovas is everyone was telling me that, that the key is kiwi on a pavlova and i never ever knew that before i didn't know that was a thing but everyone's like you have to put kiwi on your pavlova my berry selection the only problem is strawberries aren't in season in england in the winter so it's never going to taste quite so fabulous i have just absolutely loaded it with fruit i did cut the kiwi out because um I think it just looks nice, it adds a different shape and dimension. So I've got this absolutely fully loaded rectangular pavlova, a mini pavlova for one. If I'm honest, I don't really know how to eat this. Like, is it a sort of situation? Ooh, oh, that looks so good. Um, let's give her a go. That's a stonking good pavlova. The ratio of cream to the fruit, to the, to the actual meringue part. Because it's like, you know when it's still a little bit marshmallowy, and you've got like the chewy middle bit? Maybe this would be a really good Christmas option. Right, recipe number two are Icelandic pepper cookies. Now I don't know if these are like an actual dessert, or just a snack, or just something that's given as a gift. Um, but what we're gonna do first is we're gonna beat together the sugar and the butter. Um, I feel like these, I am a little bit apprehensive because I just, I just don't know how I feel about pepper in a cookie, but I'm gonna go in with an open mind. We have beaten together the sugar and butter, and now we're gonna add in our golden syrup. It said you can use corn syrup or golden syrup, but for some reason in the UK, it's really hard to find corn syrup, garden syrup, which can always get a bit messy. Yeah, baby, spot on. That was very clean. I like that. Normally it's quite a faff trying to get the golden syrup in. That worked quite a charm. Okay, let's add our little leggy. Blop. Do, 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 do. I've now mixed in my egg, I've got all the dry ingredients and the most important, which is the pepper. I mean, it is literally just quarter teaspoon of pepper. So it's not, it's not gonna be a complete game changer, I think. 
Hopefully it's just going to add a nice warmth. That's what I'm thinking. Like a, like how people have chocolate and chilli. Although I feel like people try to get chocolate and chilli to work and it never caught on. Gosh, it is smelling festive in here. Okay, apparently it's quite a wet dough. So you wrap it in cling film or whatever and you put it in the fridge overnight so it can firm up. The cookie dough has been in the fridge for 12 hours. So I feel like it's basically overnight now. Um, and the viewer actually said they prefer to cut it straight from the roll. They keep the roll in the fridge and then when they want one, they just cut one out. Whereas some people said roll it with a rolling pin and then use a cookie cutter. So just gonna cut a few of these. Well, that one was quite easy. That one's very easy in fact. And a good one to just have on hand. I half this recipe and it's made so much. I'm gonna do some thinner ones because I don't know truly well, the best size to do this. Okay, here are the pepper biscuits. So these ones are the ones that are slightly thicker, I feel like you can tell. And then the ones on this side are the slightly thinner ones. I accidentally poked that one, so don't mind that one. I can confirm the recipe was a success. Um, and because sometimes, you know, when you use a recipe and it's like, it doesn't look anything like it. But this one, I can confirm. So let's give it a go. Mmm! It it kind of is reminiscent of a gingerbread. It feels very warm and cozy and the pepper, you can't tell it's pepper. It literally just tastes like spiced food. Um, very, very, very festive. It's not a cookie, but it's not a biscuit. It isn't its own thing. It feels like, oh, it would be nice with like a warm milk. That would be, that would go so well together. I'm gonna be making pancake balls. Um, these are Danish pancake balls. I'm gonna put the proper name on screen. I really don't wanna butcher it. Um, but these look a bit like poffages. But apparently it says, these traditional pancake balls are traditionally served during Christmas. However, they're perfect for the rest of the year. Make, I've made the pancake batter because I have made, it's a similar recipe to the one that Jamie Oliver uses, which is where you whisk up the eggs and the like, then you add in all the bits and bobs and I've made it loads and loads of times before. Um, but then we are gonna use our poffager pan. I don't know if it's the same pan or not. I think it looks a bit smaller. So they might not be 100% the same, but I'm hoping they will be kind of the same. Where's my poffager pan? Where is it? Someone's moved my poffager pan. How dare they? My pancake mix is gonna collapse because it's got eggs in it. This is very sad, I can't find it anywhere. I feel like my mum's put it somewhere and she's at work, so I can't find out where it is. We can just do it in a normal pan, and I know everyone at home um, might not have a poffager pan, funny enough. So what we can do is we can just do them on a normal pan and try and make them blobby, but they're not gonna look like proper pancake balls. Oh, we can, it will still taste the same because it's the same recipe, it just might not be the full shape that we're going for. I mean, whilst we're here, I can actually test out a little Pinterest TikTok hack that I saw, where, which is like mini banana pancakes. I mean, I'm totally free balling now, but you take a like coin, a banana coin, I don't know why I said coin, but a slice of banana, and you dip it in pancake batter like that. You just dunk it in there. And then you put it on the pan because then it's like a mini banana pancake. We're working with what we've got. Here we go, even if it isn't little balls. I am loving these banana coins. Oh my gosh, stop, this is so fun. How cute are they? Even if I can't find my little pancake pan, I can find my mini sieve it says to dust them with ice and sugar when you've done. I've done a variety of fillings as I've probably explained to you so we'll see which one tastes the best. Careful because I just plated up these, the banana, and it's so hot because obviously the banana's gone all like melty. Oh it looks like snow. I really want it to snow but I have a feeling it's not going to snow this year. These are Nutella ones. They are very misshapen. Um, I think we've learnt the key to the fact that they told us to use the proper pan. But hey, learning experience. So let's see what the pancake batter is like with chocolate chips. Oh wow. That is so light and fluffy. This next one, I did Nutella. You can do jam. You can do all sorts, it says. That's like really melt on the mouth. Guys, these taste incredible. Mmm. Now let's try these little banana ones. I've just realized that I don't actually like cooked banana. So I don't know why I did that, but we'll see. So hot. I suppose it is a banana fritter. Pa banana batter cooked in oil. 10 out of 10 would recommend to a friend. 
Try this recipe out, even if you don't have the pan, you can make little pancakes. Sorry, just look at that. The melty Nutella. I basically did a blob of the pancake, pop Nutella on top, then another blob of the pancake. So it's like sandwich, so the Nutella doesn't go burnt. And I can confirm that it is delish. Okay, dessert option number four that we've been sent from viewers is the moist gingerbread snack cake. I don't mind the word moist. I hate the word saggy for everyone wondering. Just beat together the cream, the butter and the sugar. And now I'm gonna add in my little eggy boy. You add the hot water treacle mixture and the dry mixture, which is like the flour and the herbs and the spices, no herbs, just spices, um, in three batches. Beginning with the dry ingredients, let's get you in there. Number one. But it says not to over mix it. Oh, this is looking weird. It's looking like, you know, Nanny McPhee, the medicine spoon, where it like moves as one thing. The last little bit, all good in the hood. And then we just pop it into our cake tin. Right, lovely jubbly. This is going into the oven. You're done. You're done. Now, for the last dessert, we are making a white chocolate tart with strawberries. So I pre-made already the pastry tart because no one wants to see me faffing around making a bit of pastry and popping it in a tart and baking it. So they no one needs to see that. Guys, I'm just splitting the egg. Hang on, let me... I've got a double yolker. We have two yolks, people. This ain't no yolk. This ain't no yolk. This always <laughs> wows me. Twins. <laughs> okay, so now our white chocolate is all melty and gorgeous with the cream. I'm gonna whisk in um, our little egg yolks. And then we cook in the oven for 25 minutes at 140. Two goes. Don't spill it, Grace. Don't spill it. Our house is on a slight hill, so whenever I cook things, they're slightly lopsided because all the mixture's gone to the back. Okay, our little strawberry white chocolate tart is done. You can really tell how awful these strawberries are. Like, they are the tiniest little thing, and they are white and have l no flavour. You know what? It kind of reminds me a little bit of panna cotta, and I'm not a big panna cotta gal. So the way it's jiggling is not filling me with confidence or glee. I thought it'd be like more of a, you know, like a chocolate tart, but it's got a bit of, it's got a bit of bounce. So let's give it a go. Oh, it does taste good though. Flip, that's good. Oh, it does taste good. It's so sweet. It's teetering on scrambled egg. That's good, and the strawberries go really well with it. This is exactly what it says on the tin. It's a white chocolate tart. The crispness of the pastry goes really, really well with like the smooth jiggly inside. I really like this one. Not my finest moment. What is my problem? Okay, after that disaster, we're gonna finish off. Hopefully it's gonna be the best, now the best cake. This is fully cooled and we're gonna make the frosting. It's a cream cheese frosting. So we're just taking out our cream cheese and our butter and we're gonna beat that together until it's nice and whipped. We're gonna add in our icing sugar in there. Mm, I love it when you get the icing sugar cloud and you can eat it. My dad once terrified me and said that I would die if I did that or something. I can't remember what it was, but it was a terrifying tale. You know, like when my brother told me that if I didn't get out of the bath straight away, a whale would come out of the plug hole and eat me. And I believed that for like, until I was at, l at least five. Honestly, being the youngest child, you have so many things that you have to get over in your head. Okay, now we're gonna do the transition over to the nice little serving platter. Although this is a lot of frosting, I'm just gonna smooth that over. Let's just put some cranberries on top. Pretty sweet, really. I've never actually tried a cranberry. I've tried like a, a dried cranberry. You just eat it like. No, thank you. <laughs> right, here we have the cake. I'm gonna do a little cut into it and see how it is. It says it should be lovely and sticky in the middle. So, are we, what are we saying? Oh, wow, it looks gorge. Okay, this is what it looks like. It looks very lovely and Sticky and gingery. Oh, it looks so festive. I know some people would love that because it is really like gingery, but I feel like it's too gingery for me. It's very, the texture, oops, is fabulous. It's exactly what you want in like a gingery 
chewy, moist, sticky cake, but very strong ginger. But I think the cream cheese frosting offsets it quite nicely, actually. If you like ginger, if you like spiced food, like gingerbread, all things like that, then you'll like that. That cream cheese frosting is so good, oh my gosh. I hope you've enjoyed this video. You are all incredible. I love you all loads. Merry flipping Christmas. If there are any other videos you wanna see, let me know before December's up, because it's only one month, people. One month of footage that I can get done. <gasps>